just in time for our next act. It's been five years since I was on the Penn and Teller show, and it was invigorating, thrilling, and pretty terrifying at the time. He will fool Penn and Teller. Wow. A whole lot has changed since I've been on the show five years ago. For one thing, I recently got married to my best friend and performance partner. Lindsay is also a magician. It's been an exciting journey working with someone on equal footing on stage and off. My career did pick up quite a bit, especially in magic consulting for other magicians, for film and TV. It's a challenge, but it's exciting. I'm gonna try to fool Penn and Teller for the second time. But frankly, they've had five years of practice at this, and I think they're getting better every day. So I got my work cut out for them. With two randomly selected members of our studio audience, please welcome previous fooler, Francis Minotti. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> We're gonna play a little game of assumptions here. What might you assume would be in a small wooden box about this size and shape belonging to a magician? Cards. Cards, it's an excellent choice. You could have said coins, keys, anything that would fit inside the box, but you said cards and that happens to be correct. Not necessarily a full deck, but that's not much of a surprise now. <laughs> now at this point, you might assume that this is a standard pick a card, find a card trick, right? Not quite. I am gonna have you take a playing card out, write your name across the face of it. I'll give you a marker to do that. Uh, if you just lean forward and sign right across the face, big bold letters, and then show it to the camera as well, please. And it was Fred? Fred. Would you mind taking out a dollar bill? We'll need that in just a minute, please. Okay. Thank you, Janine. Excellent. Janine, I'm gonna allay your assumptions for just a minute and tell you exactly what's gonna happen before it happens. Your card is gonna disappear from the deck and reappear inside the box. You have that dollar bill? Yes. Uh, may I, would just place it right here? And in fact, uh, Fred, would you also write your name across the face of it, big bold letters? Again, we'll need that in a minute. It's, don't worry, it's not illegal, it just annoys the government. <laughs> I'm fine with that. So. Janine, like I said, your card's gonna disappear from the deck and reappear inside the box. Here's the question though. Where's the box? There. There, it's a great assumption, right? Yeah, that's what we saw before. The problem is, this is a magic show. You can't always trust your assumptions. That's not a box. That's a small stack of wooden planks. Sort of the same principles and properties as a pack of cards. You could almost stack and shuffle them, but if that's not the box, Janine, Fred, fold it up inside a hollowed out pack of cards. <laughs> One playing card. Now, Fred, here's the, uh, the magic moment. If you'd be so kind, unfold that for me and show everyone, especially the camera, if that's actually Janine's playing card, is it? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's yours. Now, at this point, you might assume that that was a trick I was trying to use to try and fool Penn and Teller. <laughs> Not quite. Now, we're going to play another game of assumptions, and that is involving your dollar bill. You signed your name across the face of it, Fred. It's the only one like it in the entire world, right? <laughs> no. Magic's all about assumptions. Now, in everyday life, you don't want to assume things about people, places, or things, right? But in a magic show, you have to assume certain things, otherwise there's really no magic. For example, well, if you don't assume that we have gravity, you won't be impressed when something floats, right? Or if you don't assume we have object permanence, you won't be impressed when something disappears. Janine, uh -huh. we're gonna play a game of assumptions. Okay. What might you assume would be in a small wooden box about that size and shape belonging to a magician? Uh, a dollar bill. A dollar bill is a great choice because you know it's not playing cards. Those are over here. If it's not playing cards inside the box, one folded up dollar bill, would you go ahead and unfold that and show everyone the signature? Is that? It's not. Thank you, it's a pleasure. You gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So now, obviously, you've been here before. 
when you come to Vegas, do you go see a lot of different magic shows or do you just like, okay, I'm gonna focus on my trick because I'm going on Penn and Teller? Uh, well, to be honest, in this case, I focused on the trick because I was going on Penn and Teller, so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to be sure, tomorrow, regardless of outcome today, I will be hanging out and partying. So come on and join, yeah. Uh, what kind of magic tricks do you do with your wife? Well, she's uh, more the mind reader mentalist in the act, and I'm the uh, sleight of hand guy. So it's kind of a little dueling banjos sort of thing. Nice. And, um, it also makes for fun times at home because uh, there are no secrets. She can read my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, let's see if you've earned yourself another trophy. Hello, Francis. Hello, Ben. Hello, in terms of uh, full disclosure, we have to say that uh, Francis is a friend of ours, very good friend of Teller's. Teller's known him for years. They've been good friends. They talk about magic all the time and everything else. And just because you're really good friends does not mean we're not going to try to bust your ass. Oh, I, I look forward to it. <laughs> That's what makes it really, really fun. What's really interesting about this, and we know that you're obsessed with composition. It's one of the things you're best at, and that was certainly shown here. The beautiful symmetry to the routine, all the assumptions. It's the assumptions that actually make the trick so deceptive. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of stuff that we're assuming because of the way you handle it, that it's something when it's already something else. You're one step ahead of us. But you know, Francis, I feel like talking about the space program. Because the space program started with Mercury, then that folded, then it went to Apollo, which is not part of this trick, and ended up with the space shuttle. But I'll tell you, that final vanish of that big bill, we thought you nailed it, we give you a thumbs up, we love the whole routine, but we don't think you fooled us. That sounds about right to me. <laughs> <laughs> Too smart for their own good. So yeah. you didn't fool them? No, not this time. Oh, this well, thank you. The last you. time you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Francis Minotti! It's time for Penn and Teller to work their own magic. You don't want to miss it.